um, I think there are different dimensions within this. There's been an awful lot of talk about mental health and that is important and certainly I agree it needs to be in there. But we also need to consider emotional well-being and we also need to consider physical. Um, so for example, a lot of people are now finding themselves working at home, perhaps hunched over a kitchen table or a coffee table or a quickly assembled workspace. And it's really important that we offer some practical advice and communicate ways that people can set up their workstations at home, uh, but also physical for people who are maybe out and about and having to self-isolate. And what does that mean? I think Nat's absolutely spot on. The things that she's saying there are so important. Um, I think one of the things that we need to do is encourage people to talk about well-being, mental health, all those things that we know are really important. In a previous um, blog that we've done and a, a previous video that we've done, we talked about three things every day, talking about the three things that we're going to do each day. And I think actually to ask people, what's one thing you're going to do for your well-being today? Whether it's that making sure you get away from the screen, because people are spending hours and hours now looking at screens, so going out for a walk in the garden, or but also encouraging people to have that one piece of exercise every day as well. So making sure that people are, are taking the time to look after themselves. And I think we can, we can encourage that by asking the question, what are people doing around that? I agree. And I've noticed it more as a business leader myself that I'm encouraging them to take more time away from the screen because I'm finding it very hard myself to be at the screen. But also I think it's good to let people have flexible working if it helps them to start earlier, have a longer break in the middle of the day. As long as they, you know what they're doing, you can fit in around their schedule, especially if they've got kids or whatever. But sometimes people need to get away to be able to think. And I think allowing that you don't have to be in front of the screen all the time actually helps people to work better, more, work more effectively. Well, I'm going to start this by being very candid and saying this is an area I have struggled with in my career. It's not an area I was always very good at. And um, I think like many people, when you're at the top, it can feel very lonely. And I certainly know that I'm a rescuer. And by that, I mean that I can have a tendency to feel that it's all my responsibility and take off the burden and feel that responsibility for your business, for your people, for everything. Um, and actually, that's not helpful because when you're in a space like that, you can't be the best kind of leader. Um, so I'd say I've probably learned it um, through actually having a poor experience. Um, and I hope others don't do that and, and really happy to share the importance of looking after yourself. I think it's great that Nat was so open there um, about looking after ourselves. Because I know, for one, I often put myself at the bottom of the pile. I'll put other people first. And in some ways, that's not always the best thing to do. Because if we're not being our best selves as a leader, then we're not going to really be a great role model for our teams. So I think making that time for our own well-being is really important. I often talk about my spaghetti head when I'm under a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. I get what I call spaghetti head, where I just can't think straight. So actually, when I get like that, it's taking that time out, mind mapping, doing whatever I need to do, but just get my thoughts clear um, and get things out of my head so that I can then help lead the team better. That's really interesting. So I found I've had a lot of spaghetti head in this last few weeks because there's a lot of interruptions, um, a lot of distractions. And I, I do think that work isn't all about answering your emails or whatever, especially as a leader. Yeah, you do need to do that sometimes but I think the getting yourself out of your spaghetti head sometimes that means going in the garden and writing a list of all the things that are worrying you're worrying about and working out how to not worry about them or what to do about them and that is certainly something that I've found um, has helped me to get away from sort of being the leader all the time and also to ask my team for help because they're all able to solve problems as well and not just take it all on yourself which is, I should listen to my own, my own advice here. <laughs> I think we're all a bit the same. I've been covering this in quite a few web webinars that I've been delivering into 
different organisations. And there are some real practical exercises that people can take away and use that I think it's really important to give people. So work around kind of cognitive behaviour therapy. And that's not an intense counselling session. I, there are professionals that do that. But it is an overview in how our thoughts drive our emotion and our behaviours. But also some great practical tools such as the, the worry tree that I know others might have used on on this particular conversation i know i find it helpful a way to really reframe that anxiety and see it in a positive way and also real ways to build up some of our resilience and our perspective which all helps to alleviate anxiety we are in a heightened time at the moment nobody's going to pretend that we're not i think we're all feeling more anxious than we probably would typically and it's about finding ways that you can sit down and work through that the communication element, I think, is an interesting one because we're talking obviously about communication and it's almost making sure we don't over communicate as well. So one of the things we've done a lot in our team to help reduce anxiety is, is actually reducing sometimes the amount of information we take in, either via the news or social media. So I think it's really important that when we're thinking about our communications, we get the tone right and we get the information and the level of communication right for our teams. Um, otherwise, we'll end up flooding them or creating more anxiety. So I think that's one thing definitely to think about. I think the other thing that I think is really important is talking. So as a team, encouraging the team to talk together and sharing our anxieties and being vulnerable as leaders and letting people know how we're feeling so other people know it's okay not to be okay. I think when we can do that as leaders, that helps our people to be more open and honest. Um, and I, I loved Nat's worry tree. We, we've talked about the world, we have a worry spot where we'll go and we'll give ourselves and limit ourselves to 15 minutes at a point of time in the day that we're allowed to worry. And we go there, we do our worrying and then it's done and we come back and we get back on it. I think from just sort of managing my own anxiety and um, helping others to do that. I do agree about getting physical, which we've talked about earlier. Um, so yeah, go for a walk, get your head out of whatever it is. Being in nature is a really good way of um, reducing anxiety. And um, yeah, talking to other people about it, confiding in your team, being, being more vulnerable than maybe you would be, but everyone's feeling like that at the moment. So it can build stronger relationships and a stronger team if you share the things that are, you're all worrying about and encourage other people to talk about their their anxieties and vulnerabilities so that's i'm finding that to be my experience at the moment so following both of your very good advice